So out of Australia, I ordered, well, out of Australia, I, so out of Australia, I've ordered a set and I, you know, if you take a look at a modern racing go-kart and you know anything about vehicle dynamics, you'd know that there's really no way a go-kart ought to turn very well. And yet go-karts turn really well. Why is that? Hey everybody, welcome back to Begin Again. I'm posing a really interesting question here because if you've been following my videos, you know that I've been struggling with the handling of my go-kart. And the problem I think is all about the fact that go-karts come with a standard set of chassis specifications that are designed around a standard kart driver. The problem is I'm not your standard kart driver. They design carts around somebody that's about five foot eight, five foot 10, somewhere in that range, and they weigh about 150 pounds. Well, I'm six foot four and 190 pounds, and so my weight is just distributed differently from your standard cart driver. I think a lot of the problems that I'm having with my cart and getting up to speed is the fact that getting the seat located in the right position is proving to be very difficult. And so we've got to come up with a way to try something out and then very quickly move the seat and try something else. Do move it forward, move it backwards. I don't know, but we need to do something because the cart's not working right. Right now, I can make a chassis change and generally speaking, it makes no difference. The cart just feels kind of numb. So we're gonna have a three-part series here. I've been thinking about this a lot. I'm getting frustrated, as you well know. And so we're gonna do three parts. And we're gonna talk about number one, what does it take to turn a go-kart? Because they're very specialized. The second one is, I've purchased a product out of Australia called the Fast Adjuster Seat System that's gonna allow us to change the position of the seat very quickly so that we can make all sorts of changes and see if we can't fine tune the chassis to my tall frame. Last but not least, we're actually gonna put the cart on the ground with the fast adjusters and we're gonna go out and we're gonna try these different settings and we're gonna find out together whether this system works or not. I'm not being sponsored by fast adjusters, none of that. We're either gonna find out, do they work or do they not work? If they work, then my recommendation for you is go out and get yourself a set of these fast adjusters because they may be of the competitive advantage that you're looking for and they certainly will improve your enjoyment of your karting experience. So. We're gonna get a little techie this time, and then we're gonna get really practical. So here we go. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's talk about regular cars first, and then we're gonna get into the go-kart. When you go into a corner, let's just use the example of a left-handed corner. When you go into the corner, the outside tires are running at a longer radius, and therefore they have to spin faster than the inside tires. Now at the front, the two front tires are not connected to each other unless you have all-wheel drive, but we're not considering that right now. But let's just say it's your standard car, the front tires just do the steering. So you turn in, it's a left-handed corner, the right side tire is going to spin faster than the inside tire, but because they're not connected, it's no big deal. At the back, however, the driven wheels, when you turn into the, that very same corner, you turn in, the right rear tire, again, has to spin faster than the inside left tire. The problem is, is that they're both connected by an axle that's wanting to spin them at the same speed. Now, whether you're driving my old pickup truck, whether you're driving a regular street car, or whether you're driving a racing car, they all have what's called a differential. And what the differential does is that it adjusts the speed that the wheels are turning at the back so that when you go into that left-handed corner, the right tire spins faster than the inside left tire and you go through the corner. If you didn't have this, that inside tire would actually be dragging you down and the car would be kind of hopping because the tire would have nowhere else to go but to bounce in the air and spin. So that's how a regular car goes through a corner. It uses this differential. Any car that you're driving, when you turn into that left-hand corner that we're using as an example, the right side tires have to spin faster than the left side tires because the right side tires are covering more distance. The differential takes care of that issue for the rear axle. 
But here's the problem. Differentials are illegal on go-karts because they want to keep go-karts simple. So what does a go-kart have? It has what we call a live axle. And what that means is, is both rear tires are connected in a single aluminum tube that we're going to call an axle and it spins in a set of bearings. And so what happens is, is that regardless of whether you're in a right-hand corner or a left-hand corner, the outside tire is wanting to turn at the same speed as the inside tire. And that's where we start getting into trouble. So the solution is, is we've got to trick the go-kart into thinking it's got a differential. How do we do that? Well, first thing we need to do is have a little bit of a history lesson. See, when go-karts were first invented, the designers of the original go-kart actually bumped into this problem. And so their solution to it was really simple. They just had one wheel that was driven at the rear and the other wheel was just like the front wheels. It just sat there and spun. And so what they did was, is they had the engine mounted on the right-hand side of the go-kart. They had a chain that went down to a sprocket that was attached to the wheel assembly. And that's what they had. Very crude, but it worked. But then they realized, uh, you know, as the engines get more and more powerful, it's becoming more and more difficult to put the power down. So somebody says, well, let's go ahead and put a live axle in, just like what we have today. And so that's where this whole thing started. But the moment that they decided to turn the go-kart into that left-handed corner, guess what? The inside wheel started dragging them down, they got a push, and then the cart started hopping just like carts can do today. And so they were like, well, gosh, I wonder what we do. So somebody said, well, let's just put really narrow tires on and we'll go into corners and we'll use a lot of body English and we'll slide them. And you can see in these videos, that's what they were doing. The carts would basically beat the differential issue by just sliding them in the corners. But of course, the more you slide, the slower you go typically, and you just don't have grip in the corners. So now they're sitting there going, okay, now we've got the ability to put power on the ground because we got both tires driving, but we're losing grip. So we're going through the corners slower. What do we do? Well, some genius over in Italy came up with the idea about 30 or 40 years ago that we need to go with a wishbone front suspension with a very cleverly designed set of uh, spindles that actually help to transfer weight with the idea being that when you turn into a corner, for a moment in time, your inside rear tire actually lifts off the ground and the cart kind of pivots. And then as you straighten out the steering wheel, the cart sits back down on the ground. You've got full traction out of the corners. Very, very simple. It's very effective, but tuning it becomes a problem. And this is where my height and my weight start getting in the way of the cart working as it was designed. Basically, my weight is too far back, in theory, it's too far back to truly lift that inside tire off the ground. And so what happens is when I turn into the corners, I get a push and I have that inside tire dragging me down and slowing me down as if I had the brakes on because it, it cannot get rid of the energy that it needs to get rid of. So let's take a closer look at my cart and we're going to talk a little bit more about this trick wishbone front suspension. Okay, so this is where being a non-standard driver can be a real handicap because originally the cart was set up for me as a tall guy with the seat a little bit further back than what the standard driver would require. And the idea was get my legs a little bit more straightened out, give me a little bit more room, all really good ideas. But I think what's happening is, is that it's putting too much weight at the rear of the cart. So when I turn into that left-handed corner, that left rear tire doesn't lift off the ground. And as a result, I'm getting a push. It's dragging me down, slowing me down too much into the corners. Now, on the other hand, if I was shorter than a standard driver, it would be very possible to move that seat too far forward. And then in that case, instead of having a push, you'd have an oversteer or a very loose condition because you have too much weight at the front of the tires. And then of course, the other piece is, is some days you have a grippy track, some days you don't have a grippy track. So to be able to move that seat forward and backwards is a really helpful thing. Now, I've gone and I've ordered out of Australia these fast adjusters. These, 
Here's the fast adjusters. It's a couple of pieces that go under the front of the seat and then a bunch of pieces that go on the side of the seat. And we're going to go out to the Dallas Carding Complex and hang out with Mike Jones one afternoon and his guys. And they're going to install them for me. And then we're going to put the cart on the track and we're going to start moving the seat around and see what happens. And then we're going to report all this back to you guys. So part two, we'll be installing the fast adjusters. The third part is when we get on the track and we get some real world practical experience. So I'm going to share all this information with you. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, if you like the video and you, you found it useful, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the Begin Again channel, please do so. It really helps us out. Stay tuned. We've got a whole lot more information coming. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. And I found them in my mailbox.